Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about PC BIOS settings. The BIOS is the software stored on a chip on a computer's motherboard that runs before the operating system boots up. Today there are also two types of BIOS in common use, Legacy and UEFI. And so before we look at some common BIOS settings, I thought I'd explain the differences between the two. All computers need a BIOS or basic input output system that runs when they are first turned on and which initializes their hardware so it can load an operating system such as Windows. For over 20 years, all PCs also came with BIOS software called BIOS. However, since 2005, BIOS started to be replaced with the UEFI or Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. UEFI also has many advantages over BIOS, including a graphical interface and the ability to access drives greater than 2 terabytes in capacity. Technically, UEFI is an interface specification that in effect replaces the original PC BIOS. However, in practice, UEFI is often listed as a BIOS type, which is reasonable as UEFI provides basic input-output system functionality. Gigabyte also specify their motherboard as having a UEFI BIOS, while Supermicro describe the BIOS type of their motherboard as UEFI, ASUS list a UEFI BIOS, here one from AMI, and MSI still just use the term BIOS. In this video, I'm therefore going to talk about PCs having either a legacy BIOS or a UEFI BIOS, as these are the labels used by most companies. Today, there are many different legacy and UEFI BIOSes in use, all with their own different user interface. In this video, I therefore can't show you exactly how to make changes in your particular BIOS. However, I can explain some of the common settings available and demonstrate what they look like on a range of different computers. To enter a PC's BIOS, we need to press the appropriate key when it's first booted up. This is typically the delete key, the F2 key or the escape key and is usually briefly indicated on the screen during the boot process. For example, here we have a freeze frame of what we see when my i7 desktop PC is turned on with the delete key being used to enter its BIOS. So if I boot up the PC and press delete, we end up in its BIOS settings. What we have before us here is a pretty modern UEFI BIOS, which we can either operate using a mouse, you can see we've got a pointer on the screen there for that, or we can operate it using the cursor keys. So I take the cursor to go down to a, go into one of the setting screens here, enter to get into it, escape to come back again, or I could use the cursor keys to move across the tabs at the top of the interface to get to all the different settings. And you'll see the, the final tab of the interface here is save and exit, and there are two options at the top there. One is to a save and exit setup, which would exit keeping our changes, but there's also an option below that to a exit without saving. And indeed in most BIOSes, if you press the escape key, you'll get to exit without saving. And I point that out to make it clear that if you want to have a look around in your PC's BIOS, you can do so perfectly safely, providing at the end you exit without saving. Which is exactly what I'm going to do now, so we can take a look at another BIOS. So, here we are in a second sample BIOS, which is the BIOS on my ASUS laptop, which I've accessed using the escape key. And this is again a UEFI BIOS, but it looks very different to what we were just looking at because this is running in its default easy mode, its EZ mode. But if I press the F7 key here, it'll take us to the advanced mode, which looks very similar to what we were just looking at. Again, we've got a tabbed interface, not quite as many options here because it's the, the BIOS on the laptop, they don't tend to be quite as sophisticated, but we can flick through a range of options, and again we've got save and exit. And again, I will discard changes and exit so we can look at a third BIOS. Now, moving from the new to the old, here we are about to enter a legacy BIOS. And I thought it was very important to cover legacy BIOSes in this video, because although modern motherboards don't come with a legacy BIOS, there are hundreds of millions of computers out there in the world with a legacy BIOS, and they're going to be around for a very long time. And as you can see, a legacy BIOS is 
text-based, it has to be worked with a keyboard, you can't work one of these with a mouse, but the same principles apply. We can go down to an option, highlight it, let's say there, the power management setup, enter on that, we can work the options there, alter if we wish, and we can use escape to get back to the previous menu. In any BIOS I've ever used, escape to get back to a previous menu always works. And again, here we've got options to either save and exit setup if we've made any changes or to exit without saving. And so again here, I'll exit without saving. Finally, here we are in the BIOS of the Ryzen PC I recently built on this channel. Very graphical UEFI system with a great mouse control. You often haven't got very good mouse control in UEFI BIOS, but here it's, it's very, very good. Unlike the BIOS we saw on the laptop, you can run this in either an advanced mode with a tabbed interface like this, or you can run it in a nicer, easy mode where everything is on the screen at once. So there we are. We've had a look at four different BIOSes just to give you a feel of what they look like, the sort of interface you get. So let's now look at some of the settings you might want to change in your PC's BIOS. A common reason to change PC BIOS settings is to determine how a PC will boot. And the boot options can be in all kinds of different places in different BIOSes. So for example, here in this legacy BIOS, there isn't an obvious boot menu, but if we go down to the advanced BIOS features, there are two options here which actually allow us to change how the PC will boot up. And first, for example, here we have what's called here the hard disk boot priority. If we press enter on that, you can see there's two drives here which it's counting as a hard drive. One in fact is an SSD, the other is a hard drive. It's currently set to boot from the, the Samsung SSD. I'll just press the escape to get back to the previous screen. But then we've also here got the option to set the first, second and third boot devices. And as you can see, this PC is set to at the first boot device is going to be a USB device. Here identified as a USB hard drive, but in fact it could be any USB device. The second boot device is then a CD-ROM, which also means a DVD-ROM. And the third is the hard disk, which is actually one of the two drives we previously selected in the previous menu. So this is a fairly common setup in a, in a legacy BIOS. We've got the PC to set up so it'll boot from its hard drive or SSD, unless it first of all finds a USB drive or a CD-ROM or DVD. If we transition to look at the UEFI BIOS and my ASUS laptop, you can see that in the easy mode top right, there is a boot priority list. This machine has an SSD on which Windows is installed, and I've also plugged in a USB drive before I booted it up, which has got Linux Mint on it. And as you can see, like most UEFI BIOSes, it tries to tell you what you will be booting. So at the top here, it doesn't just say uh, the, the SSD, which is a Micron 1100. It actually tells you go to the Windows Boot Manager. And we could change the order of these up here. This said, we go into the advanced mode by pressing F7 here. You'll see we have got a boot menu in this system. If we go across to there, you'll see the boot options. And I could go down and come back to the keyboard. We could change the first option to be the Corsair USB drive, and then Windows would become second. This said, if we now rebooted this machine, saving these changes, it wouldn't boot from a USB drive. And the reason for that is because of something called secure boot. And if we go across into the security menu, I can show you that, and it's not immediately on screen, we have to then scroll down, keep going down, and eventually, the bottom of here, if we can find it, there we are, and if we uh, select the secure boot option, you see we've got a setting to uh, enable or disable secure boot. Now, this matters because secure boot is a feature that came in with Windows 8, and basically, when secure boot is enabled, it prevents any operating system booting other than Windows 8 or 8.1 or a Windows 10. So if you want to boot up from, for example, a USB drive with Linux Mint on it, we have to disable secure boot because it isn't Windows 8 or Windows 10. And similarly, if you want to install, say, Windows 7 from a USB drive, you'll have to disable secure boot. It's also worth noting that secure boot isn't always called secure boot on all systems. So for example, if we transition to this UEFI BIOS, we go across to BIOS features, and we discover at the top we've got our boot option priorities here between a Sony DVD drive and an SSD. But if we keep going down, we find an option called Windows 810 features. This is a secure boot option on this system. And if we select that, you can see we can either select Windows 810 or other operating system. And here we have to select other operating system if we want to boot anything other than Windows 8 or Windows 10.
If your PC is fitted with high-performance DDR4 RAM, an important BIOS setting is the one to enable XMP or Extreme Memory Profiles. This only exists in recent UEFI BIOSes and is usually found on the front screen in easy mode, as we can see here, or if we go into a classic mode or a traditional mode, you'll find it under something like Advanced Memory Settings. So uh, if we click on that, you'll see here we've got the Extreme Memory Profile setting here, which is currently disabled. And this means that DDR4 memory modules will be limited to a clock speed of 2133 MHz, even if they're rated faster than this. However, if we enable XMP by selecting a Profile 1, this will cause the motherboard to read an extended memory profile from the RAM and run it at its intended speed, which here is a 2400 MHz. Now, as with all BIOS changes, we have to save and exit to make this happen. So we'll go to a save and exit and a save and exit setup. And uh, yes, we want to do that. And uh, with the board having come back again, you'll see if we look back in uh, advanced memory settings, there we are, look, our memory is now running at a 2400 megahertz, which in fact we could uh, check again also in easy mode. There we are, the memory is running at the right speed. So if you have got DDR4 RAM in your system, which is rated at more than 2133 megahertz, do make sure you enable XMP profiles. All BIOSes can monitor and potentially control the temperature of the CPU and other PC components. So for example, in this legacy BIOS, I can go down to a PC health status and select that. And we can now see here the temperature of the CPU and the current system temperature, which is another temperature sensor on the motherboard. And if we want to, we can also set some alarms. So if I go down to a CPU warning temperature, currently disabled, I could select that and tell this PC that if it hits, say, 70 degrees C for its CPU temperature, it will sound an alarm. Now, that alarm will be made by a speaker connected to your motherboard. So if you haven't got a motherboard speaker connected or other form of motherboard sounder connected, you won't hear this alarm. But if you have got one and the temperature alarm is triggered, you'll hear a sound a bit like this, which will tell you your PC is overheating. And you can also see here, we've got the opportunity to set alarms for, for example, fan failure. If the fan stops spinning, it'll actually indicate that as well. And we've also here got what's called smart fan control, which when it's enabled, means that the PC is controlling the CPU fan speed based on the CPU temperature. Now, if we transition to looking to more modern UEFI BIOS, you'll find we've got all kinds of settings for temperature monitoring and fan control. And here they're all in one screen called a smart fan. So if we go to that, here we are, look, all kinds of stuff we can adjust here. As previously, I've set a temperature warning for the CPU, but I could also set warnings for the system temperature, the chipset temperature, and the temperature of the voltage regulators on the motherboard. Over here, we can control fans, and we first of all select which fan we want to control, the CPU fan, or one of potentially two connected system fans. And then we can actually pick up a profile based upon the graph here, which shows us how fast the fan will go uh, between different temperatures of sort of 0 and 100 degrees C. I hope our PC never gets to 100 degrees C. So, for example, we could select normal. That's the default, of course. We could have silent, which will run the fan a bit slower, as you can see up here. We could have manual, where we could adjust these points ourselves to exactly where we want to put them. We have lots of a latitude in that. Uh, we've also got a full speed, if I select that. The fan will go to maximum. We'll probably hear it coming up. I can certainly hear that in the background. Let's put it back to, um, back to normal. And uh, we can also here decide which temperature sensor we use to control each fan. So for example, the CPU fan is being controlled by the CPU temperature. That's, that's an obvious thing to do. But we might, for example, want to control, say, the, the back fan in the PC, that system fan one here, also based upon the CPU's um, sensor, because the CPU is going to be the hottest thing in the PC. I often find that's the best thing to use to control many of the fans. So if you're using a PC for gaming or for lots of, say, video editing or, or rendering, you may well want to experiment significantly with a screen like this to make sure your PC is operating at an optimal temperature by making appropriate settings for your fans. Now, here I am booting up my laptop and pressing the escape key to get into the BIOS. But as you can see, we don't get straight to the BIOS. Instead, it asks for a password. 
And in a BIOS, you can set up various levels of passwording, and I wanted to show you that. So first of all, I've obviously got to enter a password here. And we'll just press enter. And it'll now give the option of going into the boot menu, or we can enter setup, enter the BIOS. And uh, here we are in the BIOS in its uh, EZ mode. And you will see if we go to, down here, uh, we've got a option to set an administrator password or a user password. And to show you exactly what those are, it's probably easier to go into the advanced mode here. So I'll press the F7 to get into that. And if we go across here, you'll see in the security section, we've got the section on passwording with some very helpful text at the top that tells us what the different types of passwords are. And I would point out the names given to different passwords in BIOSes do change on different systems. But in general, what you see here is what you'll see in most BIOSes, which is you can have an administrator password, which is a password to prevent entry to the BIOS itself. So if I uh, press enter here, I could actually set up a, a new administrator password. I've obviously got one at the moment, so I'll escape out of that. Or I could set a user password. And a user password protects the whole computer. So if you set a user password in the BIOS, then every time you turn the machine on, every time you boot up, you'll have to enter that password before you can do anything. Now, my personal advice is you really should set an administrator password, a password to protect the BIOS itself, on any mobile device like a laptop. And the reason for this is there's no point having your laptop incredibly secure if all someone's got to do to get into it is to uh, go into the BIOS, turn off things like secure boot, allow themselves to boot and say a USB drive with a, a Linux image on it, and then they could access any of the drives on your system that are not encrypted. So it's a very good idea to have an administrator password set on a mobile device. Having a user password set can also be useful. It can make your machine a lot more secure. Unless people know your BIOS password, they're not going to be able to use your machine at all. Having said that, do be aware that BIOS passwords will be removed if your BIOS is reset, and that on a desktop PC, someone could achieve this by opening up the case and removing the battery on the motherboard that maintains the BIOS settings. Some people find the idea of making BIOS changes to be a daunting prospect. And indeed, there are settings, such as those for memory timings or memory voltages, that you really shouldn't touch unless you're very certain what you're doing. This said, there are also other settings, such as the one here for changing the colour of LED lighting, that are both obvious and safe to experiment with. You also always have the option to exit without saving, and if you get into a real mess, you can reset to defaults, if necessary, by removing the battery on the desktop PC's motherboard. Hopefully, what I've covered in this video has helped to demystify the BIOS and given you an introduction to making BIOS setting changes. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.